We're here in Mesa County School District, which is in Grand Junction on the far west part of the state. Uh, it's a pretty sizable district. We're the 12th largest district in the state of Colorado, uh, the largest between Denver and Salt Lake. We have 22,000 students. Our free and reduced percentage is about 51%. I've learned through the School of Hard Knocks, like many of you. Uh, I worked as a, as, as a cleaner in housekeeping and rooms. I've worked as a dishwasher. I've worked as a waiter. I've worked as a short order cook through a lot of years in a lot of different restaurants and a lot of different hotels. And I get the fact that the work that we do and the work that our staffs do, staffs do every day is it's difficult work. Uh, they're on their feet all day. It's hard work and, and, and it's challenging work. You've got hundreds of other things you've got to worry about in your kitchens. You've got staffing, you've got training. Uh, we have all these rules and regulations that we've got to worry about so we can have a passing administrative review. And there, they are, those are all concerns. And, and they're all things that we as leaders, supervisors have to juggle and, and triage every day and prioritize and make sure that we're working on. I, I would think of it this way. I would look at marketing as a great way for you to show your team your employees that are working hard every day to provide great food and to provide great customer service. It's a what better way for you to champion their efforts and their hard work than for you to spend that time and invest in some form of marketing that helps to promote your program. That's how I look at it. The second part of that is participation. When you market and you get your word out there, you want parents to know the things that you're doing and how does that benefit learning. And so we're constantly using the tagline, we fuel successful learning. And in that, that's on our, all of our materials. We're constantly pushing, promoting that. And it's why we made the move to go from processed food program to a scratch food program with LiveWell's assistance and with the Colorado Health Foundation's grant funding uh, to do what we're doing in all the schools, to put the salad bars in and to have kids to be able to eat healthier because the research shows that and I want parents to know that, that we've made that investment to be part of this initiative in the state of Colorado that really is transitioning being a leader in the country. I think one of the most uh, significant challenges all of us leaders deal with is the challenge of how do I best serve and support my staff to where they can be the most efficient and the most friendly and professional service givers they can be. That's, that to me was a large challenge, and especially in an environment that is full of regulations. So I think it's very easy for us in our work to be so focused on the regulatory pieces and the compliance of those pieces that we lose sight of what's most important. And what's most important is providing a great environment and a great experience for these kids. As we think about marketing and we think about, well, how do I market the area that I'm in, and the school that I'm in, or the schools that I'm charged with, I think one of the challenges we have to first do to build into that marketing piece is to make sure that we're doing everything we can do to provide good, strong personnel development for our supervisors. You know, how do they deal with the daily teaching and coaching of their staffs? Because if that's not going on and that's not happening, then you're not going to have a great product and great service. And if you don't have great product and great service, then you're not going to have good and great participation, which means you really have nothing to market. I look at marketing at, as from a target audience standpoint is my primary market are the students. Our primary market are students. And so how do we, how do we present ourselves with our uniforms, with our tone of voices, um, with our, the look of our cafeterias? You know, do we present a welcoming, comfortable atmosphere? Secondly, uh, I look at parents. Yeah, parents are a big part of our primary market. We have everyday opportunities to get those kids and those parents as customers. And again, starts with service. How well are we consistent in providing all that service and how consistent are we with our food quality? But I have found that when all that's taken care of, at the end of the day, you've got great food, you've got great service. I have found the best way to target parents is at the start of the school year 
and to offer and meet with your principal ahead of time and offer to do a food open house night. To me, it's a great way to show and have that parent uh, experience what you, the kids are going to see all year long. For instance, we just, through Live Well, who has done a great job in teaching and promoting and developing our staff uh, and our programs over the last four year, four, uh, five years now, is uh, we want to promote salad bars. And so we actually had parents come in, we invited them for this food open house night, start of the school year. And the idea was, is we would provide the food with my staff, our staff, and we would provide uh, the environment on top of whatever learning education activities that the principal and the schools were doing. Well, of course, the principals love the idea because you're taking care of that for them. They don't have to organize that on their own through a local food establishment or through PTA. They want the help. And it's a great opportunity for you and your program to be able to market directly to your target audience. We're at Chatfield Elementary School here in the east side of the, the Grand Junction area. And I want to show this school because this is a school that probably is typical to most schools across the state. Uh, if you look and just kind of take a look at it, a lot of the school here has kind of that dated uh, old furniture look. Uh, furniture that was probably purchased 30 to 40 years ago. Uh, but it also kind of gives you a feel for well, how do things look as, as we look at our schools, how does it look to our customers, the kids, when they come in? And, and one of the things that we are looking at as we're improving in uh, schools across our uh, uh, county and across the, the city is we're upgrading graphics, we're up, uh, taking a look at furniture and we're taking a look at everything to try to look at when can we finance it? When can we get grant monies to help improve the look of our, of our cafeterias? Because I think that's part of it. Just like when all of us go out to eat, all of us make a decision, a consumer choice, when we're looking at restaurants. We look at the curb appeal of the restaurant, we look at the street, we look how clean it is, and that kind of forms a judgment whether we eat there or not. It's the same way with parents and kids. We're actually here at, in Clifton, uh, Colorado. This community here is about 85 to 90 percent uh, eligible uh, for free or reduced meals, which basically means it's a high poverty community. So four out of five kids or four in any given household are eligible for their, or any uh, in this community are eligible for those meals. So we decided, well, how best to get to those, those, uh, those kids? Well, we came up with the, the Lunch Lizard food truck. We actually received donations because of the work that we were doing with our marketing and our branding with other programs in the community, they actually uh, funded us the money to go out and buy the truck. Our program in just the two short years and four months it went from serving 4,000 plus meals two summers ago, we will finish serving around 28,000 meals this summer. We went from one truck to three trucks in that time span. We went from six uh, stops a day to now 17 stops a day, and we went from six weeks of the summer to now 10 weeks. The benefits that we've received from a public relations standpoint has just been a juggernaut. We've received national attention, we've received USDA attention, uh, of course local community attention. I bet we've probably done 80 to 100 interviews over the last two and a half uh, years, and it's become a big discussion point in the community now as for childhood hunger. Just as other districts have opened their doors to me in the state to be able to travel around and visit your, dis your districts, to be able to go and see your schools, and I learned so much from that, and I want to be able to make sure to open that up for here. You know, I'm not saying we do everything great. We don't. We have our challenges too, uh, just like anyone else. We have schools that are constantly needing help and work, and we have some that have moved along and are doing great, and all of us are challenged with that. But I. I think that all of us can benefit and learn from one another, and I really believe that. And so I've learned some of the best ideas from those of you from around the state, and I want to share that here. So come down to Mesa County, come down to Grand Junction, uh, stay the weekend, river raft, mountain bike. Oh my gosh, there's so many outdoor activities to do here. Hiking, some of the best hiking in the state is right here in our high desert part of the state. So come and visit Grand Junction, and we'd love to show you some of our schools.